Greetings. We're here today to talk about tools that you can use to assess the health of your Active Directory environment as well as remediate issues. So the first thing we're going to look at is the best practice analyzer. I think this is a good starting point because you want to assess if all your servers have been set up properly based upon Microsoft's guidelines surrounding Active Directory, DNS, and other, other topics that will come up when you run this analyzer. So what we can do is we can create a new group of servers. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Active Directory to discover the servers. And then I'm going to add my domain controllers to the selected servers group. And then we're going to call this Contoso DCs. Now I'm going to hit OK. The next steps that we'll do is we'll come down to Contoso DCs. And we'll go ahead and kick off the best practice analyzer. And let's go ahead and choose all the domain controllers involved. This is a step I've done before, and while that's running, to refresh the scan, you'll notice that you can choose each of the DCs that you would like to look at in that group. And then it's going to populate the best practice analyzer results for each of those DCs. Some of the things that you'll see that are common are things like the DNS server has loop back on the address and which is a good practice but having it as the first entry is not a best practice so what we can do next is try to remediate that issue i'm going to go into sconfig and network settings select my adapter and i'm going to set the dns servers so in this case we should set 192.168.1.2 as the primary and then 172.0.0.1, or the loopback, as the secondary. All right, so you'll notice that that error was remediated after rerunning the scan, and now we've got some new errors that have populated that we can work through. We also have some warnings, some of which pertain to virtualization best practices with domain controllers. So you have a great wealth of information by running this best practice analyzer. I'm doing so on a Utils01 box because my DCs have been converted to server core. So in this scenario, the dashboard is a great location to perform tasks on groups of servers like the best practice analyzer. You can also see some aggregation of other types of alerts. Now along those lines, I installed the RSAT tools on this server so that I can manage my DCs. And I installed Windows Feature RSAT I I. And that's going to include all the sub features and management tools. And as you can see, there was no need to install them because they already exist. But now that I've done so, if I need to do any sort of remote administration. You know, I can simply choose the domain controller and then address issues that the best practice analyzer might come up with. For instance, I saw an issue on DC1 that may also be present on DC3, which had to do with scavenging not being enabled. So let's take a look at that. See if that also exists on DC3. And this would be a good way for you to set up some best practices guidelines or to you know do additional health checks. So as we can see, scavenging is not set up on this domain controller. So let me go ahead and set that up there. So now I've remediated the other two alerts that would likely show up in the best practice analyzer. Next topic of interest is the event viewer. And I'll look for some documentation on, on setting this up. Uh, so this is just going to be a basic introduction to the concept. It's not really going to be a deep dive into how to, to accomplish uh, monitoring the Active Directory alerts. But what we can do is we can set up subscriptions And we can aggregate alerts 
to our utilities box. So, so let's just choose system event for now. Collector initiated. Let's choose RTCs. And then we can choose the selected events. Let's do critical warning. And then we can do by event log. So for now, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do all the different logs available. So it's basically giving me a warning saying that this may not be the best idea, but I want to see if we can generate some logs. So we'll go ahead and change our account from the machine account to a specific user. Since this is going to be on DCs, I'm going to use a domain admin. All right, so here we have our, our collector running. Here's our forwarded events. You can attach a task to the event. Uh, you can have an action like start a program to remediate or send an email, which says it's deprecated, but hopefully this will, will still work for now. And this can not only help you aggregate types of events that you want, you could potentially send emails off of those events and or remediate them. So for instance, if SCOM agent is not running on the DC, you could just you know set a batch file up to uh, start that SCOM agent. Now we're going to take a look at some items that aren't built into Windows uh, that you can download for free. So here's a tool called the AD Replication Status Tool, and it essentially uses Rep Admin and some other discoveries to give you an assessment of the health of your Active Directory environment with regards to replication. Uh, so as you can see here, a status of zero looks good. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and generate some false positives here. So now what we can do is go back to configuration and uh, do a rediscovery and let's see if we can generate some errors. So essentially the tool is going to scan your environment and see if it can discover some Active Directory errors and if it does you can click into the actual TechNet guide which will help you remediate those errors. So in this case, I've rebooted several systems to generate some false positives, uh, but had these been real alerts, I could go ahead and look into how to remediate them. Now, if you're in a similar situation where you've uh, rebooted some DCs and you're seeing what you think to be some false positives, perhaps there's some inter-site replication that needs to take place, you can come back and click on Rediscover the Environment so you don't have the overhead of uh, discovering the environment and then you can refresh the uh, replication status and as time goes on I would be seeing more zeros as replication continues to occur. You can also export this data to an XPS report or to an Excel spreadsheet and I find this tool to be very handy when spot checking replication versus just using say the the rep admin uh, standard rep admin command line tools. Now to continue along this concept of remediating the issues here, let's say for instance we want to dig in a little deeper into this 1908 issue. Microsoft has these really nice labs available that surround Active Directory replication issues and it's going to basically speak to the um, most common ones. So what we can do here is launch this virtual lab environment take a look at the lab guide to see if some of the errors that we're trying to troubleshoot in our environments actually line up with the ones available in this lab and then you can do uh, sort of a, a trial run if you will with very little overhead. Uh, the lab guide also serves as a really good uh, technical reference or a quick troubleshooting guide as well. So what I've done here is I've converted the lab guide into a PDF and what I want to do is just search for that 1908 error and see if it comes up. So yeah, so as we see in exercise three, we have the ability to 
look through and troubleshoot then resolve this AD replication error. So you'd be able to do so in the lab environment or try to uh, do so in your in your actual environment as well. So I'm going to let this lab spin up and then we can take a look at what I'm talking about. It's a lab manual that you can save uh, for f future use or you can follow along with this while performing the lab steps and here you can see it's spun up various systems. You've got DC1, DC2, tree root DC and a couple of child domain controllers. We also have a Windows 8 client and you'll notice that this Windows 8 client has internet access. So not only can you use this lab to perform the steps in the guide, but you could uh, conceivably use this lab to test out many scenarios, download different applications and whatnot, and test this out while the lab's persistent. Now it's only going to persist for 179 minutes, but that should give you a good amount of time to actually play with different scenarios. And as you can see, this is a full-blown Hyper-V environment that they've spun up for you. You know, so I can even surf the web, look at the Surface Book or anything else that, download anything else that may be of interest. Now when you close out of the lab, you're, you're also able to do some evaluations. It helps the authors of the lab to justify its existence if you go ahead and give some good feedback on that lab environment. And there's several iterations of this. Here's the EMIL 400, and that is uh, troubleshooting lingering objects. There's also a nice write-up that Justin has here at the AskDS site that talks about the lingering objects liquidator tool, which is a nice tool that can help you graphically remove lingering objects and do so with a lot less administrative overhead. So in certain scenarios, that tool may be useful for you to look into. The next tool I'd like to talk about is Port Query UI. You can enter the destination IP address or FQDN of a server, and then you can run a scan against it to check and see if the ports that, that Active Directory domain services require are open. Basically check those dependencies. You can also manually input ports if you needed to, if you were just troubleshooting something in particular. But this tool is very handy in assessing the health and or remediating issues as well. If you had time, you know, Windows time issues, you can make sure that the, the ports are open for Windows time and so on. Uh, this also shows ephemeral ports and RPC endpoint mappers and things of that nature. So this is definitely a tool that you should take the time to get to know and, and add that to your toolbox. Now we're going to move on to tools that you can consider using that actually have a cost. So uh, there are these risk assessment programs. And if you, know, you really need to have Microsoft dig into your Active Directory environment and let you know uh, if there are potentially any issues or to do a health check, you can definitely subscribe to this. There are various online and offline additions to this. I've not actually performed an AD wrap or subscribed to one, so I'm not completely sure what goes on here. There is a tool that you should look at downloading, and its main purpose is to just scan the health of your system before performing this AD wrap assessment through Microsoft. Now, this tool will do some basic scans. We can create a report that shows the environment that was scanned. So other alerts are uh, supportability check. I think they're probably benign, but you know, essentially it's going through and it's making sure that admin shares are open, DCOM, you know, some of the ports that we looked at with port query UI, it's just going through and making sure that those are open, remote registry and other dependencies of the AD wrap engagement. Finally, the last tool that I'd like to discuss is Operations Manager. If you purchase Operations Manager, there are several management packs that can monitor types of services so or roles. So we have the Active Directory, uh, the ADMP or Active Directory Management Pack, and we can also monitor some of the dependencies of Active Directory, so DNS, and uh, we can look at sysfall shares and things of that nature. So 
uh, here's the the Active Directory management pack, and uh, we're going to see a lot of clutter because uh, this is a lab environment. But um, you know, you can see alerts that are pertaining to uh, to the DCs. And in this case, I know this domain controller had been stopped, so I can just remediate that. Um, we've got some interesting topology views, uh, similar to our topology diagrammer, except that these actually represent the health of the environment. So they're going to show you, you know, potential alerts, as well as show you what the topology looks like. So you can drill down to what these alerts might be. Uh, you can also take actions from the console, RDPN, or ping the computer. Uh, the various actions depend upon what um, management pack you're in at that point. So for instance, if I go to DC state, you will see things like rep admin, set SPN, get the health of SPN, and so on, uh, enumerate trust, things that relate to that particular management pack view. Uh, you can see the health states of the servers. So if one of my DCs were down, this would show up as red. Uh, you can also set up optional management pack um, counters like replication traffic, performance of replication, uh, latency, uh, get a good picture of what the environment looks like. We also have some performance counters that are built in as well, where you can see what Microsoft deems to be relevant metrics for Active Directory. And you can go through and take a look at these historically. We can also look at our DNS dashboard and see things from the DNS perspective. You know, are we healthy or not? We can look at forwarder states zone states and trust points and other items of interest as well as our DFS replication. We can look at our replicated folders so we can see here that our sysfall is available for for sysfall replication. Um, we can see that the service is running. We can see the volume is healthy. It's not running out of space and things like that. So overall, as you install each of these management packs with SCOM, you can really get a good deep dive of the current system and the way that it's operating. You can also see errors and then remediate those issues. I want to say that we can also install the best practice analyzer as a management pack if you wanted to see alerts on those types of events. So uh, that concludes our conversation of tools available to check the health of Active Directory. And we also looked at some tools to help you remediate uh, issues uh, that you may run into while you're doing this health check.